Welcome to this edition of Diligence Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm TK Kerstetter, and I'll be your host for today's show. Today, we're going to be talking about demystifying total shareholder return, TSR, for executive compensation. And joining me is Tom McNeil, who's a partner and lead consultant with Meridian Compensation Partners. Welcome, Tom. Thank you. Good morning, TK. Um, I hate to admit this, but when I was on a board, um, my first board 25 years ago, uh, there wasn't much discussion about TSR. Um, but in the last uh, eight to 10 years, it's certainly been a topic when you talk about executive compensation. And um, unfortunately, it's a topic that isn't always clear or um understood. And uh, that's what we're going to try and do today is sort of demystify that a little bit. So um, we've heard about two types of um, TSRs. One is relative and the other is absolute. So let's start today, if we could, by just defining uh, both absolute TSR and relative TSR for our audience. Certainly, TK. TK. Well, to begin with, both absolute and relative TSR are measures of a company's stock price performance based typically on something called total shareholder return or TSR. Relative TSR compares the company's TSR performance to that of a selected peer group of companies, typically over a three-year performance period. Absolute TSR measures a company's TSR performance against pre-established absolute stock price goals or growth rates, also typically over a three-year performance period. So one measures the company's performance against other companies. The other metric, absolute TSR, measures uh, the company's stock price performance versus pre-established goals. How common, uh, from your experience, how common are the relative versus the absolute as metrics in a incentive plan? Relative TSR is the most common metric used in long-term incentive plans across all industries. That's particularly the case among companies in homogenous industry sectors where there are multiple natural peers. Absolute TSR is actually a, a much less common uh, uh, metric uh, and is used only in a small minority of companies. In certain sectors, we've seen an increased an increase in use of absolute TSR uh, as a standalone metric, or in some cases, uh, in fact, in many cases, as a cap or a modifier on uh, relative TSR or other metrics. So investors, uh, particularly the proxy advisors when this became, you know, sort of felt this was the uh, end all solution to evaluating executive compensation. But there has certainly been some debate, um, at least certainly the questions that I've received about TSR. So maybe we could go through the pros and cons of each and sort of give you know, a little more flavor to why somebody might pick one or the other. Certainly. Well, one of the key reasons why relative TSR is the most common metric is, quite frankly, uh, it, it, it has both share, very strong shareholder alignment, but also there's no goal setting required. Uh, it simply measures uh, a company's performance relative to the other companies, and you select a payout curve and uh, and percentile results and, and establish or calibrate the corresponding payouts at each level of performance. Um, and as with many cases, uh, in many cases, as a particular practice, uh, or in this case, metric becomes more popular, popular, it sort of snowballs on itself. And it has just, I think some of those characteristics of relative TSR have made it very, very popular. Um, it is also uh, favored by both shareholders and the proxy advisors. Uh, and in fact, uh, uh, the proxy advisors use in their pay and performance alignment uh, reviews, they, they use a, a form of relative total shareholder return. Now, some of, the, some of the cons with using relative TSR is that it requires a selection uh, of a peer group. And uh, as I said earlier, 
uh, for companies that have uh, uh, homogenous uh, or that reside in homogenous industry sectors with multiple natural peer companies, that's that's usually not too challenging. Uh, but not all companies have that have that luxury. Um, also, one of the cons is uh, executives often claim, uh, and many directors for that matter, that it has poor line of sight, that it, it measures uh, just an outcome instead of driving behaviors. Um, and, and one other, one other uh, con is that sometimes it can result in uh, a company receiving a payout or executives receiving a payout when they're simply the best of a bad bunch. The, the company's performance can be poor, but if you are better than the others, uh, there, there can still be a payout. With respect to absolute TSR, uh, some would argue that it has very strong, even stronger uh, shareholder alignment than relative TSR, which obviously has very fair, favorable uh, optics, particularly among shareholders. Um, I think many people believe that it has greater line of sight than relative TSR because you're focused only on the company uh, that, that you're familiar with and not on the TSR of other companies for which you have no control. Uh, but, uh, but, but, but that's often a topic of some debate. The biggest con with uh, absolute TSR is that it requires goal setting. Uh, and goal setting for any metric over a three-year period in the future uh, is, is challenging for most companies, especially when uh, you're talking about the company's stock price, which may be subject to extrinsic factors, uh, which by the way is, is a, a con I should, uh, should have mentioned on relative TSR that applies to both uh, uh, metrics is that uh, uh, anything, anytime you're measuring the stock price uh, for a company, uh, it's subject to extrinsic factors for which management has little or no control. Now, the counter to that is that aligns uh, the, the executives and their payouts with shareholders. So that's, that's a, a common point of debate. So this hits on a great debate that I've had in the past and with the relative um, in an environment where you, if your peer group is good, and I, it sounds like that's a pretty important factor, you know, in the relative, but if your peer group is, is relative, um, it seems that if management is the best uh, in, let's say a down cycle, okay, and possibly a save shareholders millions of dollars because it made all the right moves. And that is demonstrated by being the best of your peer group in the down market. You know, to me, it seems like management who's made the right moves should be rewarded. Okay. At the same time, I hear a lot of pushback that if the shareholders aren't it, are, are experiencing or if the company's experiencing bad and the shareholders are value has dropped, um, that they argue that no one should be rewarded, you know, for that. But, you know, we know that that markets are going to cycle. So uh, to me, it makes sense that if I as a CEO make all the right moves to save millions of dollars that um, me and my team should be rewarded. So is that sort of part of the discussion that's uh, and the debate that's going on? TK, you've, you've, you've hit it right on the head. That is one of the principal discussions uh, that, that uh, takes place in any boardroom where uh, the use of TSR is, is considered and, 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 and discussed. Uh, it is that balance. Uh, between aligning with shareholders, which is in large part the purpose of long-term incentive uh, programs, especially those that are equity-based programs. Uh, but but uh, the, the, the argument that, well, gee, management may have done their finest job in a down cycle also has its, its, its merits. Um, one, one common uh, feature that we've seen with these types of programs uh, is, uh, and especially when relative TSR is the primary or, or maybe even sole performance metric, is using absolute TSR as a cap or a modifier. How that works is 
uh, you measure relative TSR. And if a company is indeed the best of a, a, a poor performing bunch or among the best, uh, but if negative, if I'm sorry, if the absolute shareholder return for the company is negative during the three-year performance period, then the payout may be capped. So instead of paying out at 150 or 180 or 200 percent as one of the top performers uh, in the bad bunch, if the company's stock price has gone down, uh, then the payout may be capped at, say, target. Uh, That's become a very common uh, 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 sort of control mechanism, if you will, uh, and has been very well received by both shareholders and the proxy advisors. So that makes perfect sense um, in my mind, although that's not, um, I'm sure, what uh, someone feels when they lose value um, or the share price goes down, which um, certainly we are having some of that experience now with um, with what we're going through um, after the pandemic and the inflation that we're seeing now. Um, so last question, and we have about a minute and a half left here, but um, what are you seeing in the way of the debate in with compensation committees um, with this? Are they looking at the hybrids you discussed? Are they, is there not much discussion or what's happening in the uh, compensation committees? Well, I, I think, as I said, m- many companies uh, have already uh, adopted absolute TSR as a as a cap or a modifier. I think um, what uh, more companies are having conversations about, and and I think should have conversations about, is is there a role for absolute TSR as a full metric uh, in long term incentive plans? Um, I, I would say part of that conversation should really start with um, looking at overall, what are the metrics that are most appropriate for the company? And that's based uh, obviously on the type of business it's in, um, what are the key uh, performance indicators of the company, the key value drivers of the company. But I think it also has to do with the company's compensation philosophy. How does it view the role of long-term incentives? Are, Are they intended to drive performance or reward for results and align with shareholders. I think that's a real key uh, uh, for a key aspect of, of the conversation. One thing I would urge companies to do is have that conversation and consider uh, the role of absolute TSR likely in combination with one or two other performance metrics in the long-term incentive plan. Well, um, Tom, I'm sure that TSR is here to stay as um as uh, uh, the um voting on uh, uh executive compensation uh say on pay is and so um we'll you know there's no shortage of people um keeping an eye on what's happening and um letting their voices be heard so i want to thank you for taking the time to join us tsr again as uh, certainly raises some questions uh, in people's mind about a measure, but um, I think you've certainly made it clear. So thanks for joining us. Thank you, TK. I've enjoyed it. And that will conclude this edition of Diligence Inside America's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week when we take another look at a critical topic that'll help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then. <laughs>